Okay, so quite simply, I didn't want to read this article alone. Um, I started reading it out loud, and I decided, why not just record myself reading it to you? So this is, uh, this is by Richard D. Bartlett, one of the founders of Lumio, one of my uh, favorite uh, pieces of software. I think it's a really wonderful platform for decision making. And uh, I think it's absolutely revolutionary. They've done a really great job of bringing it to the masses. And, uh, and if you have a group of people and you need to kind of work things out um, and make collective decisions, I think it's a really uh, wonderful, useful, and free tool that you can use for your group. So uh, I highly recommend it. So I'm actually going to be reading this for the first time, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, this is a this is an article uh, written by Richard um, that he came out with today, and uh, and it goes a little something like this. It's called participatory organizing from co-op to network to mass movement. What can movement organizers learn from small group democracy? I have a hunch that 21st century democracy is going to be characterized by much more participation. I don't mean mass opinion gathering. I'm thinking of a kind of participation that is transformative for the participants. Deliberating, sharing your experiences with others, changing your mind, growing shared understanding through difference. The democracy I care about is a social process, not a statistical one. The democracy I care about has nothing to do with voting and everything to do with caring, listening, trusting, challenging, bonding, changing, tolerating, confronting, educating, negotiating, growing, listening, listening, listening. It's about relationships, not categories. It's about meaning, not winning. I've experienced this form of democracy in small groups. My first taste was in the General Assembly of the Occupy Movement where I learned that my perspective can only ever apprehend one facet of any complex issue. Inspired by the General Assembly and frustrated by its limitations, we started the Lumio Co-op, where I've been practicing small, do small group democracy for the past five years. We're 10 people committed to each other, committed to a project that is bigger than any of us, committed to working in a way where we can be greater than the sum of our parts. At a slightly larger scale, I've seen this work at Inspiral, a network of 250 people, all learning to work together with maximum autonomy and minimum hierarchy. As we tour through the USA, I'm testing if the lessons we've learned in these small groups can apply at a much larger scale. What kind of technology, what kind of culture is required for millions of people to participate in making meaning together? Can we reimagine government as mass collaboration? We had a great time last, ye last week in Washington, D.C., the latest stop on our U.S. tour. We were hosted by Stephen Larrick from the Sunlight Foundation, who helped us organize a terrific workshop at the OpenGov Hub. The Hub is a massive co-working space with more than 40 different organizations, all working to make, a make government more participatory, transparent, and accountable. On Wednesday night, we gathered a wonderful, diverse crowd in the Hub, we had an environmental lawyer who'd, camped, who'd been camped at Dulles Airport fighting the Muslim ban, international development people, someone from Occupy Wall Street who moved on to Indivisible, an educator working to enrich Egyptian democracy. Uh, this is a photo. Too enthralled last night to live tweet, but thanks for the fire conversation on participation at the individual network and societal scale. The session started with two presentations, one from me and one from B. Cordelia Yu. Cordelia is a self-described political science nerd. Lately, she has been researching the historical conditions that put Taiwan at the forefront of participatory democracy, just 21 years after their first presidential election. These days, any proposed legislation must go through a substantial participatory process process before it can become law. Take for example the case, this case last year, where 2,000 citizens collaborated to write the new legislation that now governs ride-sharing services like Uber. 
That's an inspiring glimmer of what 21st democracy, 21st century democracy could be. Cordelia's research question is, how did that happen? Why Taiwan? Why now? I was struck by a theme from her talk, that Taiwanese people value democracy so much because they remember not having it. For 40 years until 1989, Taiwan was subjected to the White Terror. Under martial law, political dissidents were routinely imprisoned, disappeared, and assassinated for working to make the state more participatory, transparent, and accountable. I was moved by Cordelia's recollection of being a kid, sitting with her father after he became a naturalized citizen working through the Oregon Voters Guild and meticulously, filing, meticulously filling in the postal ballot. After growing up under an authoritarian regime, this was the first time he'd been allowed to vote. It's no wonder he approached the task with such reverence. Like other commentators I've worked with, one of Cordelia's answers to the why is this happening in Taiwan is Confucianism. She described this as the shared understanding that the success of an individual is equally important as the success of society. I wonder how on earth could this understanding be fostered in a Western context where freedom and fairness are seen as polar opposites. After Cordelia's story, I shared some lessons from Inspiral and Lumio, identifying six organizing patterns I've seen spreading between participatory groups. Those six patterns for participatory organizing are, one, concentric circles, participation, participation versus commitment. Two, intentional culture building. Three, stewards for peer support. Four, Rhythm cuts information overload. Five, asynchronous decision making. And six, explicit norms and boundaries. Interesting. After the presentations, we hosted a fishbowl discussion, a participatory process to engage the collective intelligence of the people in the room. You can hear a recording from the discussion here. I thought the conversation was fascinating. We talked about growing trust without face-to-face -face interactions, techniques for redirecting old institutions with a lot of inertia, and how to overcome the tribal identities of small groups to form large coalitions. MJ Kaplan, one of the colleagues, colleagues at Lumio, has deep experience supporting org organizations through change. She describes a formula for change with four elements. D times V times F is greater than R. I understand this to mean something like the product of the dissatisfaction with the current situation multiplied by a compelling vision for the preferred future and the effort required for the first steps in the right direction must be larger than the resistance to change. That's beautiful. Applying this formula to the US, it's obvious that, the dissat that dissatisfaction is steeply rising across the political spectrum. Between New beyond New Zealand and Thailand, Sorry, beyond New Zealand and Taiwan, I'm personally inspired by pro-democracy movements all across the world, from Spain to Korea to Kurdistan. They're all incomplete and imperfect, but I hope by sharing these stories with each other, we can inspire the vision factor. With our workshops offering tools and processes for participatory culture, we're offering some easy first steps for people to make their everyday organizing a little more democratic. The big question I'm left with is, can these three factors... Uh, can these three factors, if these three factors can add up to overpower the resistance to change before the collapsing biosphere gives us no other choice? And with that question, that big question burning at the back of my mind, we board another flight, next stop Arizona. And if you want to read more, you can, uh, you can click on his name, Richard D. Bartlett on Medium, you can follow in Spiral Tales. And, uh, and you click there, you can support his writing. He is on Patreon, and he's not making any money yet on Patreon. I guess, I guess he, he needs to be, um, and that would be really sweet because you'd be supporting Richard, and you would be supporting his actions taking part for Lumio, and that would be supporting Inspiral, which is an incredible organization as well. So yeah, if you're interested, I'm gonna leave some, some links. You can go check out the article directly, and follow along with Richard, and uh, and I hope you you enjoyed our read along. Have a have a nice one.